Hello Australia, welcome to another big couch. See these people on the couch, that's one of our presenters called Grace. And this is a lovely actress that's just come home to Perth, but she's doing heaps of stuff. Her name is Christina Tasker. You're going to meet her very soon, but only if you're good. Stick around for the whole hour, otherwise you won't meet anybody. We've got a brand new presenter called Di Wilcox. Now, Di is a parenting expert. She's on Channel 9's Perth Today News. You're going to meet her here in Perth, live on our couch, which she tells us all about parenting. Later on, we've got raw food with Vanessa Jean and her daughter, Ariel. We're going to be making some raw pasta and probably eating it as well. And uh, later on as well, we've got a brand new segment to talk about style. It's called Pushing 50 with Michelle. Look forward to that one. But we've got a fantastic Sophie Martin waiting for me to stop talking so we can open the show. Here it is, episode 524. It's showtime on the couch. Yeah, it's showtime on the couch. You can see it from your house. You can watch it from your house. Guess what I am? Can anybody guess what I am? UFO. No, I'm dizzy. <laughs> but yes, UFO. Thank you, Tony. Uh, UFO is what I was doing. You know, like a big UFO. You know the. You know what I'm talking about. Aliens. UFO. Sophie Martin singing a UFO song. Here she is to open the show.
There you go. Sophie Martin, a great talent. I love what we do here on the couch. We're always promoting young talent. If you are young or old or any sort of talent, please contact us through our website, thecouch.com.au, and we'd love to give you an opportunity to come on the show and perform as well, just like Sophie Martin did. And she'll be on at the end of the show too, once she catches her breath with her dancers, and mm -hmm. she'll perform with us again. Okay, somebody that's never performing, because she's just great all the time, is Grace, <laughs> and she's back with us. Over to you, Grace, you've got a great actor. Thanks, Fred, for that introduction. You're welcome. Um, hi. I'm here with Christina Tasker, who has just won the title of the most promising actress in April 2015. First of all, congratulations, that's an awesome title, and hello. Thanks, hi. Thank you for coming on to the show. Thank you for having me. Um, can you actually tell us a bit about this title and how you achieved it? Um, it's kind of brand new still, so I'm kind of getting used to the title, but um, it started um, at the end of last year in LA and I was doing a web series with a bunch of Australians and it was called Toolies. And last year they actually released it in Sydney for, it kind of looks at the subject of leavers and you know, kids celebrating high school and that kind of thing. And I just found out recently that the director actually put me forward for this award. So when I was nominated, I had like the support from you know, everyone in Perth and everyone in LA kind of voting for me. And then in April, I got, I you won got it. Wow, <laughs> yeah. that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so can you tell me a bit about how the whole journey started? Mm -hmm. How you wanted to be an actress and everything? I got introduced to the entertainment industry um, when I was three, dancing. And then my first professional role as, as an actor was kind of, um, it was kind of very unexpected. I got the role out of all these little kids in, in WA. It was in 2005 and it was for Les Mis at the Regal Theatre. Wow. So I, I was, ex you know, I had like all these standing ovations and I was like, wait, what is this? Like, is this, is this, do I want to do my this? Calling? This is my calling in life. Like, and so um, I, when I went to high school, I went to John Curtin um, for drama. And that kind of, I, you know, was doing short films, I was doing commercials, I was really keeping busy. So when I graduated with five years of theatre stu study and um, from, from John Curtin, basically. Which is a really good school, isn't it, John? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you have to audition to get in. Mm. So it, yeah. So and you've got to be good. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then um, a month afterwards, I received a scholarship um, for a drama school in LA. So wow. a month later, I was still 17. I headed over to LA. You headed over to LA yeah. at 17? Mm hmm. Yeah, my mum helped me move. But um, yeah, I just headed over there by myself after she left. And That's yeah. That's amazing. That is so young. Mm -hmm. So, what, what school was that in LA? What? Um, I studied at TVI Actors Studio for just over a year, and while I was studying, I did a bunch of short films, web series, um, I did a commercial, I did a big thing for BuzzFeed, which was massive, and wow. um, it was all over Yahoo News, and that was great. And also... In um, America? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So I've been super busy over there. Um, I recently had the opportunity to be um, at a table read with Al Pacino, which was absolutely Oh, sorry, just quickly, is this you? That's me. This is you. That's for a, um, a multi-camera pilot I just did in LA before wow. I left. Wow. Um, it's being sent off to film festivals right now. Um, I play the lead role. Oh my gosh, there's guns and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Tense. Um, so sorry, you just said that you were around a table with Al Pacino. Yes. Wow. Yeah, it was massive. It's a new film coming out and I got down to the last two actresses for it. Oh. So, um, unfortunately I didn't get the part, but the experience... That's incredible though. Exactly. Mm. The experience to be around a, you know, a table with all these actors, especially Al Pacino, it was kind of just like, wow. That is amazing. You know, I'm getting recognised. You know, this, this is obviously what I, I've got to do. Yeah, you know absolutely. I mean? So you're back in Perth now. Are you staying mm. here or are you going back to LA? No. I'm here to see family. It's been two years since I've seen them, so right. I really want to spend Need some time Need your fam time. time. Exactly. And um, I'm headed back to LA end of July. So I've got some projects lined up. So I'm very excited oh, cool. for that. So you've got some things waiting there mm -hmm. for you. Yeah, I've got a new media and a print already set up. So there's a lot of things under wraps right now, but I'm really excited about. Wow. So with LA and acting, what's mm. your big goal with it? You know, where are you headed? Um, my long, long, long term goal, I would love to be on a TV show as a series regular. That's something that I would absolutely love, but I have goals that are two month, three month, one year, three year, you know what I mean? So I'm always pushing towards something. Mm. And what's your typical kind of dream TV show? 
The Vampire Diaries. The Vampire Diaries. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be a vampire. <laughs> don't bite me. <laughs> no, I won't. But yeah, it's just, I don't know, there's some fascination, I suppose, with that kind of, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> with vampires. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, um, can you please tell, uh, say, you know, do you have any advice for young actors who are wanting to get into the industry? Training. Training is really, really, really important. You can't get anywhere in this industry without showing, you know, your training and what makes you who you are. Mm. And, um, you know, it takes a lot of work. So, you know, it's all about persistence and, you know, keep drilling and... Christina. Yeah. Can I just ask a quick mm -hmm. question? Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank <Thanks>. you, Fred. <laughs> Why not Australia? What's wrong with the Australian film mm. and television industry? I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that you're doing anything wrong. Yeah. Why isn't it happening over here for you? What are we doing wrong? It's not what's happening over here, I suppose. I just, this opportunity to get a scholarship to study over there, it was, I was going over there just for a year to study, but I got caught up with opportunities because people saw me talented, so I jumped at that opportunity to kind of just to explore. It was more of an exploring thing that kind of led do, to would more. You, would you wish that you could do that here in Australia or do you love the fact you're in the LA and America and all that sort of thing? There's this dream thing about LA mm. that I can't even explain. And there's nothing bad about Australia. Mm. I will always be Australian. <laughs> but there's just something dream-like. Because you know there's like yeah. millions of kids watching this. We hope. <laughs> All right, there's a couple of people watching. Now, so. No, look, a lot of kids are watching and they're saying, you're an inspiration because I want to be an actress, I want to be an actor. So many kids want that dream to come true. And, and, I, and I'd like yeah. to say, try it here in your own country first. Uh, what do, I mean, I know uh, Grace is sort of going to ask you anyway, I suppose. But um, I'll Thanks, ask Fred. anyway. <laughs> what ahead. do they need to do? How can we become, how, what opportunities can we create in our own ground mm. here before we go anywhere else? Exactly. What do we need to be doing? Well, I mean, the first step, like I said, to, to Grace is it's training. I mean, I've been training since literally I was like seven. You were three, you said, when well, you did dancing, the Well, yes. dancing, yeah. I did dancing. I started when I was three. So that was kind of like, you know, t training is so important. Then you have to build the credits. You have to, you have to prove that you're worth it. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Not just any random person can just pop into L.A. and say, I'm going to be on a TV show, you know what I, I mean? mean. So, yeah. Exactly, so it's very much about training and you know, you really have to start from the bottom and prove yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, thank you so much for that advice. I mean, there are a lot of actors out there who do need this kind of advice mm -hmm. um, and who are just getting started. And mm -hmm. is there anywhere that we can go to check you out? Yes. Okay, I have a website. It's christinatasker.com. And that basically has everything. My videos, my bio and everything on publicity. So, yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, we'll definitely be checking that out. And if you did miss that, you can head over there. You can head over to thecouch.com.au. <laughs> I say that again, thecouch.com.au. <laughs> and have a look at her website. Thank you so much for coming in, Christina. This has been great to talk to you. Thanks. Back to you, Fred. I can see <laughs> we need a bit of training there ourselves, of course, with Grace. Oh, thanks. Maybe you can stick around and help us with our, our own crew. I will. Thank you very much. No, I'm only joking. Well, thank you for coming. I'd love to have you back again because I know you're only in the country for a couple mm -hmm. of months. So stick around. We'll have a word to you in the break because I'd love to have you back on again. But to stick around, you need money. And Bendigo is making it so much easier through Community Bank in Bayswater and Naranda giving you a $100 bank account. If you would like to win this $100 voucher that you can open up a bank account at any Bendigo bank. All you have to do is put the code word Bendigo. It's on screen right now. Bendigo. Spell it as it is on screen, otherwise I'll just delete. 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 Bendigo is the code word. Your name and address needs to go on an SMS. Send it to 0439 929 929. 0439 929 929. And you could be one of those lucky people to open up a Bendigo bank account thanks to Community Bank, Bayswater and Naranda. Check them out on the web. Thank you to Christina. Thank you to Grace. She'll be back after the break with another great guest. And I'll see you at the other side of the break as well. I hope. Welcome back to the couch here on Aurora Television, Foxtel. It uh, gives me great pleasure to have this lady back on as much as we can. And, of course, her mum's here too. Yeah. Uh, no, Vanessa Jean's back from Food Alchemy and her daughter, Ariel. Thank you for coming in. Are you excited, both of you? We are. Yes. 
What about you, Ariel? Are yeah. you looking forward to making me some uh, raw pasta? Yes. How do we make raw pasta? Why do we have to eat raw pasta? Um, well, because it's healthy and oh, it's yeah, really are. easy to make. Yeah, whatever, just keep talking. Yes. <laughs> Is it okay? She lost me when we said healthy. No, that's all right, you can stop <laughs> I'm going to cut the end off. What, for is Ariel going to be helping us today, Vanessa? She is. She's going to be making. The actual Tell pasta. Tell me a little bit about raw pasta from, from a healthy point. Like Ariel said, it's healthy. So you can use... Basically, there's so many issues for people with their gut health, mm. yeah, and gluten intolerances and with the way the wheat is. So we make spiralised zucchini or carrots. You can use beets. Mm. And you place them in this wee little spiraliser. That's the thing over there. And it makes the pasta, yeah. You can actually see... Uh, I think she's Ariel's excited to see she's us, doing it, good. yeah. So do a lot of people eat this sort of pasta? Yeah, a lot of people now are. Now, we call it pasta because it looks like pasta. That's it right. It yeah. probably tastes like pasta. Yes. But it doesn't have all the wheat and the grain. And That's all right. The, the, yeah, like absolutely. Stuff. Wheat in and of itself, when it was in its mm. natural state, was lovely. You know, mm. we grew up on it, that's for mm. sure. But it's the pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, the sprays. It's been so far removed from its natural state now mm. that the wheat of today isn't the wheat of even, you no, know, 30 I years agree. ago. Nothing is as good as that. No, absolutely. What have we got here in front of us? We've got some beautiful produce here that we're going to add. Yeah, this is the, you remember? Yeah, the yeah, dried oregano. My mum used Hang to put that down. in oil, dip yes. it in oil and then put it over the meat. Yep, do you remember? absolutely. And we do it over the, the bread as well. You know, and then we've got some capsicums. We're going to do a bit of capsicum sauce. We have look at this gorgeous rainbow chard mm -hmm. from our garden. Yep, beautiful herbs and some citrus. Beautiful, and you yeah. got olive oil as well. We use olive, olive oil. oil. Yep, we will. Some and what fresh was this olives. thing here? This is just some Himalayan salt that I've got in a recycled what a jar. Lovely color. and pink. So salt should be either pink like this, or the other salt I use is the Celtic sea salt. So this salt. is the real colour. That's right. That's well, well this is me. the real colour for Himalayan. Okay. Celtic is a blue grey colour. And all this stuff is available Never in white. your backyard or in a green grocer, a fresh green grocer. And this yeah, is the Himalayan so, salt. Yeah. So we use everything that organic. Is from our garden. That's from our garden. That's the right. The colours, I can't. The colours seem different. Like, that's right. Well, this is rainbow chard. So silver bead often has that okay. white, that white spine in the middle. Yeah. So this one has red, orange, or oh, yellow. Oh, We've brought our beautiful there yellow you go. That's the colour in now. I was sort of saying. See how it's a yellow? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's isn't quite, it? it's succulent too. And it's that, of beautiful. course, is a lemon. That's still yellow. It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> now, have these come from your backyard or not? These are from our friend's okay. backyard. So he has lots and lots of gorgeous citrus. Right, let's so do what it. we've done is we've cut the ends off the zucchini mm -hmm. just to make it nice and straight. And then Ariel will hold this. I'll hold the handle. Now this She'll... is how easy it is. The kids can actually do this in the kitchen. Yeah. And absolutely. you know what I love? Kids actually have a lot of fun. Do you like doing this sort of stuff, Ariel? You're yeah. forced to. I love it. You love it. <laughs> Liar. We bake together. No, and, I believe you. You know, because we're not, actually, we're not 100% we? raw. Our family just, no. we're not. We do beautiful cooking. You know Whole what? food How cooking is, is my joy. How kids helping absolutely. you Absolutely, absolutely. Do you remember this when we were kids? Yeah. Your mum used with to say, Mona come and cook with me and make a cake. Everything was together. Do you know what's really good with this? You can make it as a raw pasta mm -hmm. and you can put a cooked sauce on the top. Okay. You know, if you want to. For the purposes okay. of today, we're going to whiz I up a really fast That will probably one. be enough for now, Ariel. There you go, Ariel. What That's we might perfect. do is make up the fast sauce in that so let's, that we can get let's straight Let's do this. In. I'll move that out. I can leave it on there because we don't need to take that out now. Yeah, yeah we can take that off. Put it over there. If you that bring the amazing. Thermomix a little bit closer, Fred. Yep, there we, we go. We can oh, put these in here. There you go. Do you want the lid off or not? Yep, let's take the lid off. We're going to put those in. And uh, Hang on, darling. So we're just putting in some capsicum in there. Chopped up. Just, does it have just, to be a certain size? No, no, no. The Thermomix bit, can handle it. Tell me it. a little bit about the Thermomix for those people who haven't used one before. So the Thermomix, we're using it in the capacity of a... We're going to add these as well as a... like a, More like a food processor today. It does yep. cook. Mm. Um, you can make gelato in it. You can, Custard. You can do custards. You can do Pasta. doughs. Yeah. I, I actually have a friend, and uh, Fran uses this all the time in her cooking school. Yeah. Absolutely. It's worth about two and a half grand, but I tell you what's the best two and a half grand that Absolutely. you'll spend. Absolutely. Because for those people who think, ah, oh, it's too much, you're actually replacing about five or six different items in the Absolutely. kitchen. Absolutely. It says it replaces yep. everything. Now, what we've done in here is we've got a capsicum, some yep. rainbow chard, fresh mint and parsley. We'll put that in. Ariel, we'll I'll just add a touch of olive oil, sweetheart. A little bit of olive oil just to mould them all together? Yep. Oh. Do you want me to open that? Yes. Here we go. How much would you like in there? I'll do it. Oh, I think it's actually... I think it's actually... It might be stuck. Yes, it is stuck, but it that's It is? Right. Okay. Well, you keep working on that and we'll get this going. There you go, Tony, our floor manager will Hang on, Ariel, take it off with lid? his teeth. So Ariel's just going to whiz this up. Where's the little lid there? There, there we, we go. go. We've got about three minutes to go, so let's start... There. Oh, 
Tony's done. Forza la forza. What are we doing, Ariel? Are we putting it on a certain We're saying number? use the force, um, aren't we? No, no. Do you know what sort of number to put it on? It's ready okay. to go. Oh, que bellezza. If you open that for me, I'm going to... No, no, what are you doing? Okay. Just okay, do it slowly. It. And I'm going to slowly add some olive oil in there. Oh, wow. Okay, we'll it's pour so a little quick. bit on this. It is super that fast. Looks slow. How long do we do that for, Vanessa? Just till it's a sauce. And then that what I'm going to do, seconds. I'm going to put... Have we got a camera over here for a yep, second? let's take a camera I'm over I'm going to add there. some zest of the orange here. What's the orange for? Just a bit of a uh, citrus taste? The orange is beautiful in it, actually. Just this, this gorgeous Do you remember when you were a kid, it. did your mum ever make orange salad? Yes. With the vinegar with, and, and all And with over? fennel. Yeah, I used to Yeah, my nonna that. did it all the You're time. You're very similar to us. I wish so, Ariel, hang on a minute. We're going to add some go, lime to this. Lime essential oil. So, again, I'm using the doTERRA essential Didn't oils. Did we use that on our skin last time? We did. Oh, wow. And do you want me to just scoop my... that for you? I did it. And yeah, we're actually going to add a touch of... Hang on, we've got to blitz it a little bit more, guys. Two okay. more a few more seconds. Push all of that down. Okay. Grab no, the lid. I can do it. Okay. She knows, Mum. I know, she does. This is how good it is, because she's obviously done this a few times with you. Look at that. Yeah, she does go. everything in the kitchen with me. It's fabulous. Okay, beautiful. And literally, can I say, 15 seconds is all you've had it in there. Yeah. And we're going to pour that on top. I'll move this out the way. So we can it's actually, actually see. We're just going to pour 21, some of this over much. the top. Don't you love kids that are accurate? We're putting it over the six. zest. And then... There's more in there. Mom. Then, then we're going to pasta. take some gorgeous caper berries. These are from up north. They are stunning. Well, are, are they not olives? No, this is oh, caper berries. Caper berries. How I, come they're so I big? Don't... Oh, these are the berries themselves. I mean, this is the most succulent gorgeous caper I've ever come across. I have across. never seen more than the studio. Having two women fuss over me and what I eat, it's incredible. Okay. Vanessa? I'm so glad you're enjoying it. For I am actually, because I don't have to cook it for a change. No, that's right. Do you know right. what? I have to say, you know how I'm usually quite cynical and, and nasty. but Now we're but just going to put a little bit it. of dried oregano over the top. I love that. That looks really and that's attractive. It. Let's go. Would there you like we go. try some? Can sure. I try some? You can try some. Here we go. Oh, hello. You would anyway. <laughs> well, Isn't she a lovely yes child? No. Never put your children into the thermomix. Well, yeah, Thank you need you. the fork. Would you like to try some as well? well you don't, I know you don't eat it because you're on a diet, <laughs> but I'm going to have some. It does look like spaghetti, doesn't Get it? Get some of the topping with it. It's right. supposed to. Here, I'll fish some on Ari, you. i got, got some. You do? Yep. I'm going to try that and then I'll give it to our floor manager. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't test taste the sauce. <laughs> You'd hate it if I said I didn't like it, but you know what? I like it. Oh, good. Well, there's a surprise. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's so that's a raw that. pasta, everyone. I don't know if you've got a good shot of this one. Adrian, mm. where are you? Are you shooting yeah, this yeah. one? That is okay, Ariel. So this is the raw pasta, that's simply not. spiralized zucchini. We top it with some capsicum, fresh herbs and rainbow chard. We've featured mint and parsley in this. Essential oils of lime and grapefruit and then some beautiful organic olive oil and some Himalayan salt. What's happening And that you? is it. And What's then, happening? of course, the orange. Chard. You know what? You it is beautiful. I didn't have the oil, well, that's all right. I'll, I'll that's okay, he'll have it later. Can I just give out your website? It is, of course, foodalchemy.com.au. Have you it got is. any courses running in the next month? We've got, I'm touring over east, so anyone who's in Queensland, so you're going New South away Wales, from Perth? including Dubbo and Victoria, are you taking I'm Ariel there. with you? We are, yeah. we're oh, touring beautiful. together. It's going to be my birthday. Oh, thank God, <laughs> leaving the state. So guys. we're doing a tour Excuse of the east coast. What? So anyone who wants to come and play with us, they can come to some free aromatherapy workshops and food classes. Fantastic, that is Food Alchemy. That is actually really, really nice. I can't even bag it because it's actually a refreshing change to pasta because I don't eat a lot of pasta. There you go. And that went down in, in gastric band people eat it as well. <laughs> Tony's telling me we've run out of time but hey who cares if you want to know more about the show this is how you do it. <laughs> if you're looking for more info on anything you've seen on today's show head to thecouch.com.au it's where you'll find all the links for our guests plus clips from the show backstage photos and even exclusive movie reviews. You can also sign up as a couchie and be part of our competitions including spin it to win it. New Zealand viewers, that's open to you too. So jump online and check it out now. 
thecouch.com.au. Ariel, have you got a boyfriend yet? No! Okay, they get so angry with me. It's not my fault I'm too old. I that every oh. time. I know, but you don't need one. That's the point because you're very independent, aren't you? Thank you. Yeah, well done. Enjoy your holiday. Have a great birthday. Thank you. And thank you for Vanessa for being in today. It's a pleasure. We've got a parenting expert that you might want to take heed of, uh, Vanessa. <laughs> they might help you with your lovely child. I don't know how you can improve such a wonderful She's child. She's perfect to me. Thanks, Fred. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Here's Nisha with Di Wilcox. Over to you, Nisha. You're looking beautiful. Thank you, Fred. Joining us on the couch today is Di Wilcox, parenting expert. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Now, you work in a very important area. Tell us a little bit about what you I do. I do. Um, it's quite a diverse area. So I work with um, children, teens and families. And I have a real passion for reconnecting families, but also giving our children some self-confidence and belief mm -hmm. in themselves. Mm -hmm. So um, I run workshops for families. Mm -hmm. I run workshops for schools. Mm -hmm. um, and I run a, a, a few different areas. So I look at dealing with anxiety, dealing mm -hmm. with friendships, body image, self-esteem. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's even sometimes I get called in to help with children mm -hmm. struggling to sleep. What can we mm -hmm. do for them? So it is quite diverse, but I love it. And I can sense the passion as you're talking through all of those areas. And I understand that um, your interest, and I'm sure you were always interested in this area, but your passion came from a personal experience you had? It did. So for the last um, 20 years, I was a teacher mm -hmm. and um, I've taught in schools all around the world. So I've mm -hmm. been very fortunate to travel. Yeah, wonderful. But um, one of my visits back home, um, mm -hmm. I had a dear friend of me, uh, mine contact me and say, Di, I know this is a little strange, but can you come to a funeral with me? Mm -hmm. As it turned out, this funeral was her sister, and her sister was only 22 years old, mm. and she took her own life because she'd been bullied so badly at school. Mm. And as I watched the PowerPoint, and I was just standing there thinking, oh, this is just horrendous. There were two people behind me, and they whispered to each other, isn't this just ridiculous? I mean, bullying's just part of life. And for me, that was like a brick to my head, mm. because it was like, how, Absolutely. as empathetic human beings, do we accept bullying as part of life? Mm. Uh, a week later, I saw a 60-minute segment on um, a lady running programs to help children overcome bullying. And I rang her and said, can my daughter come and do one of your programs? Mm -hmm. And she said, sorry, it's not in WA. So I found myself on a plane to Sydney, trained up in all those programs, brought them back to WA. Mm -hmm. But ever since then, I found, you know, there were a few gaps that needed filling. Mm -hmm. And so I've spent the last seven and a half years filling those gaps and working with both primary and high school students. That's wonderful, and you really are sharing the message, aren't you? I think you're, you're talking at schools. Um, I, I do a lot yeah. of school talks. Uh, in primary school, uh, I'm running a program called the Seedlings Program, mm -hmm. and I go in probably two or three times a term to a school, and we look at giving kids these strategies of dealing with bullying or accepting people's differences. Mm -hmm. So to give you an example, mm -hmm. I just did a same but different this week at a school okay. and talking to kids about the fact that we judge people on shape and size and whether they've got an ability or disability mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. uh, the colour of their skin. Mm -hmm. And we talk them through some of those myths so that children are understanding that, um, you know, if media, through media mm -hmm. and through the things they hear their parents say, we kind of debunk those, mm. get rid of them. In high schools, I'm getting a lot of uh, body image workshops. Mm. That seems to be a huge issue. Girls not feeling that they're good enough. Mm. And look, I think it's wonderful that you work across the whole spectrum. So when you say children, we're not just talking about primary school, we're talking about high school. You're also in the social media, I guess, working with, with teenagers as well. It's an important forum. Tell us about that. Social media is huge, and uh, I've been doing a bit of work uh, with the Melbourne Weekly Review where they do, um, we do a, a column, but then we do a Facebook chat that goes live nationally, and that allows parents to get on and ask questions, mm. but allows kids to get on and ask questions too. And uh, social media is a massive part of their life, mm. and we need to find a way to communicate really well mm. with them, and, and that's why we use it to the fullest. Wonderful. And you're also doing a lot of great work locally in the media. Tell us about that. Yeah, so um, I've been a regular on Channel 9 as mm -hmm. uh, their parenting expert, doing some work there. Um, radio is something a few mm -hmm. people would have heard me on as yes. well here in, in Perth locally sure. and, a bit of, and a bit of Sydney radio as well. Mm -hmm. So I do travel the country mm -hmm. and I'm travelling internationally now with some of my workshops in exciting. Texas and the USA. So that's exciting. So, so tell us um, how you got connected into the US because that's another fantastic story too. It is. That was uh, social media. Okay. Social media, people saw what I was... Well, 
I was doing and asked mm -hmm. how they could get involved. Mm -hmm. And uh, a company over there asked if I would be willing to train facilitators to run my workshops mm -hmm. there. And um, so I'm going to travel a couple of times over there to do larger conferences. Mm -hmm. And But I've got facilitators doing the same work in Texas Houston and it's about to be launched in California later on. Well, hey, well done because Thank making you. that jump across shores also goes to show that you know, it's not only young Australians who are facing these, these difficulties in relation to, you know, everyday growing up, going to school and dealing with difficult situations. It's actually a global issue. Absolutely. Yeah. Just because you're in Australia, living in Australia doesn't mean you're facing uh, issues that no one else mm -hmm. does. It's globally that, mm -hmm. you know, our children and teens are experiencing the same thing. So if we can help them globally, that's, you know, it's a, that's my dream. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, you know, I think it's a dream of we, we fully endorse what you're doing here on the couch and we would love to have you on regularly and I'm sure you'll come on and talk about different topics um, and I'm sure the audience will be very interested in oh, those I'd as well. Oh, I'd love that. Oh, it's just been an absolute honour to be on the couch. You. It's been an absolute honour meeting you, you're a wonderful <laughs> lady. Um, now, where can we find out more? Yeah, so I've got a website, uh, diewilcox.com.au, mm -hmm. and uh, you can uh, contact me there. There's an actual contact page. Mm -hmm. So any questions, I've even got a Dear Di blog there, so mm -hmm. any questions you need help with, please don't hesitate. Wonderful. Well, Di, we'll see you again very soon, and keep up all the good work. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Now back to you, Fred. I learned heaps there. Thank you very much to Di and to Nisha, of course. And Di will be back as a regular feature every month on the show. So if you enjoy it, get in contact with us. Tell us that you enjoy it, just like if you enjoy Vanessa and Ariel. Thanks for being on the show. We'll be back with more of The Couch right after this. We're going to talk about pushing 50. Join us then. Back to the couch here on Aurora Television, Foxtel around Australia. Time to introduce someone new on the show, and it's not Grace, you've met her before. But with her today is a good friend of mine called Michelle. She's got a Pushing 50s website that you've got to catch, but she also talks fashion and style. And uh, no more talk for me because Grace is going to do it all. Over to you, Grace. Thank you so much, Fred. Well, as you said, I am here with Michelle Merdzen, and we are going to be talking about her new star website, Pushing 50. It's so lovely to have you on the show, Michelle. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for coming. And can you tell me a bit about yourself and this new website of yours? Sure. I basically started up the website about a year ago. It's been very slow moving. It's just a bit of a hobby. Well, it first started out as a bit of a hobby. All of our children had left home and I was thinking, oh, what can I do? I needed something to fill my time a bit because I was always, I still work, but I, I wanted something else to fill my time. And a lot of my friends have been really encouraging and have said to me, why don't you do something with your fashion and your styling? Because I'm always taking friends shopping and, and sort of helping them out. Mm. And um, my daughter said to me, well, you know, maybe you should do a website. So um, she helped me put together the website and um, from that, I've sort of just been building on it and um, putting some of the photographs up that my brother and I do together. He's been great doing all the photographs for me and I style all the outfits and um, that's sort of how it all came about. Wow. So what's your actual aim of the website to help? How, how are you going to help women with the website? Really, I just wanted to sort of show people how you can look really great on, um, on a budget. Basically, mm. it's, it's just about not being pigeonholed into going with all the trends and um, you know going to all the you know designer shops and things like that it's really just about learning your own style and learning about how to shop on a budget and you know there's so many stores out there and so many ways to get around it without having to spend all the dollars so that was it. I've always been a bargain hunter, so yeah, yeah I'm a it's bargain easy hunter. for me. <laughs> easy, yeah. Um, so that, well, that's awesome. So can you can you tell us, you know, whereabouts you take the women? Can you tell us about what you actually do for the women? So do you? Well, a lot. Most of it's basically been my friends to start with. Yeah. So we'll just go out to the local shopping centres and sort of, you know, have a bit of a wander around. And my thing is that I get people to go in and and I say, look, try the clothes on because they just you know, say, oh, I'm not sure, that won't fit me, and, mm. oh, that's not really something I would wear, and, and I sort of say, look, you know, just go in the fitting room, try them on, you have to try them on. And they usually come out and say, oh, okay, that, that's actually quite nice, I like that, you know, so um, that's sort of how it all started. People tell each other, and the next someone else will say to me, you know, can I come shopping? And I'm yeah. like, yeah, let's go, you know, but um, yeah, I'm a bit pushy. I sort of <laughs> you know, <laughs> say to them, come on, we've got to try things on. You can't just look at them on the hanger. That won't give you any idea at all. So mm, yeah. Absolutely. So is that part of your business that you want to set up? Actually, you're taking women out? Like, is that Yeah, I'd saying? really like to take people out and just encourage them to embrace their own style and mm. not to be, you know, sort of worried about 
the, the, the things that they like to wear or the way they like to wear it because we're all different and unique and I just think it's a really nice thing to just be yourself and Michelle, sorry to sorry. very important in-depth <laughs> yeah. talking have you ever had <laughs> someone that you've taken out and said this is crap I hate what you've put me in what do you do in that situation no, I haven't had anyone that said anything <laughs> that bad, but I have well, had if, friends... What if they no, I say, I don't friends... like it, and then you have to sort of reassure them that it looks good? Well, I think the thing is that, like with a lot of friends that I've taken out, I have had a couple that have said to me, you know, I've picked out something that's quite ruffly or frilly or something, mm. and they'll look at it and sort of go, this isn't oh, me. I'm not, mm. I don't know about that, that's a bit, you know, too frou-frou for me. Mm. And I'm like, just go in there and try it on, and then we'll discuss it. They'll come out and stand there and go, oh, actually... That actually looks quite nice. And I'm like, see, I told you, you need to go in there and, and try that, it. That's the point I was yeah. trying to make, because a lot of people are so hard to change. Mm. They, they think are. they always have to wear black, or they have to wear blue, or they exactly. have to wear heels. And I think it's important for people to say, step outside that box sometimes, mm. isn't it? Yeah. Sorry to interrupt are you. you. Also okay. honest with <laughs> Thanks, Brad. <laughs> <That's> right, <laughs> are you also honest with the women, though? Like, do you have to be like, well, look, this is not your style? Yes, or? yes okay. I'm very honest. And it's like, I don't, I would never stand there and say to somebody, oh, yeah, look, look, you know, that looks great. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. It's like, no, I'm honest. sorry, but if it doesn't look good, I'm going to say, uh, no, that colour's not looking great, or I don't think the style of that's really appropriate for you. So I'd rather just be honest. And I like people to be like that with me too. I take mm. some of my friends with me and I often say to them, look, be bluntly honest with me. I'm really okay with it. If you, know, if you think it looks too tight or it's not really my style, just say, no, don't wear it. I'd rather, yeah. I'd rather someone tell me the truth. See, I'm quite honest with my friends as well, but then they get really offended. <laughs> they get really no, upset. No, I think it's better to have someone that you can take out with you that's actually going to be truthful. Because, mm. I mean, some friends will, will go out with you and say, oh, yeah, that looks lovely and that's great, but really they're sort of not trying to... They don't want to hurt your feelings. So, mm, you know, absolutely. I think you've got to be honest. Yeah. So can you tell me about what you're wearing? Because this is a beautiful outfit. Can you tell me about where you got all this? And Yeah, sure. This, well, my pants I've had for quite some time now, which I bought from Target and I think they were about $20. This is on my website, by the way, so mm -hmm. this is under my um, business looks. <laughs> and, um, yeah, the, top, the shirt I bought from the Salvos, because I love shopping at the Salvos, and my accessories were from Equip. Um, the earrings were $3, and my ring was about wow. $3. And my lovely shoes here were from Spendless, which were about $12. So, um, wow. yeah, this outfit, I think I managed to style it all under about $40. Can I just a look at one of your shoes? Can you just take that off just for a <laughs> How much did you say you paid for those? Twelve dollars. Twelve bucks. Do they come in smaller? I should. Oh, that's so you so well, Fred. Well, yeah. let me just. Try. No, but I did buy them oh, in yeah. nude as well, and in I bought where? two pairs. I bought two pairs of black ones. Can I say they're really trendy for they twelve are bucks? They trendy. That's what I was saying. Before. Leave them there just as a trendy, if you like. I know, we can drink out of cool, champagne isn't it? later. Yeah. I, so. I love the fact. <laughs> I, I, I do love the fact that people looking at this are going, ah, oh, she must spend hundreds on herself. Well, that's what Grace said to me. Yeah, I did. She say. looks beautiful and very professional, and yet you can do it on a budget. Yes, exactly. You don't need and to. And that's spend a really that important money. thing for women to know that you don't have to go out and spend all this money. You can look amazing like you do. Yes. On a budget, which is awesome. Can I have the other shoe as well? Just I'm going, <laughs> I'm going out tonight. <laughs> no. No, I, I, um, oh, well, fair enough. <laughs> my, no. my, yeah, my bargain shopping has been something that I have done since I was quite young because mm. at, my mum used to take me to the salvos and to the op shops and things like that. I was the oldest of four, so we didn't always have the money to, to go out and you know, buy all those you know, trendy things that we all wanted as teenagers and stuff mm. like that. So it was, um, yeah, it was something that I've been brought up with that. So to me, it's nothing. To go out salvo shopping and things like that, I don't look at it as anything different. I, I've always said if I had loads of money to, you know, spend, I still would go out and, and yeah. buy the things I buy. It's I, I get probably more of a thrill from buying something that's cheaper anyway. So Yeah, me too. Yeah. I get so excited. What a bargain. Yeah. Um, well, can I just ask you, where can people find you online and your website and everything? What's your website? The yes. website is pushing50.net and um, I'm also available on Facebook under Michelle Murdzam and I'm also on Instagram on pushing50. Awesome. Well, that is so great. And thank you so much for coming in. And if you missed any of that, you can go to thecouch.com.au for more information on Michelle and her amazing, trendy website. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. And I hope that I've got a lot more ideas and things to share with you over the next coming months. And um, there'll be some surprises. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, thank you very much. And back to you, Fred.
Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to having <laughs> Michelle on the show. So we didn't want to sort of go too far with the segment today, but Michelle sort of did a bit of a general outlook. We're going to have Michelle back every month if she's willing to come back after I give her back her shoe. <laughs> and uh, we'll have her on. And, and you missed one spot that you can find Michelle. You can actually find her at Target because that's where she spends a lot of her time buying <laughs> shopping. I like Kmart as well, but we can probably really yeah. sort of give each other and advice. BW. Thank you very much to Michelle. Now, we need to give away this fantastic voucher. Bargain food at Faster Pasta. We're talking bargains today. If you would like to win not one, but two vouchers today, all you have to do is do... Oh, actually, all you have to do is find out about the new menus first. Check this out. Introducing Faster Pasta's Hi new there. lunch menu. Lunch the way I like it, please. Just choose your fresh pasta. Linguine. And your sauce. Fiorentina. From just 9 90 Then add sides and drinks. Lunch the way you like it for a price you'll love. Only at Faster Pasta. And if you'd like to win the $50 voucher, all you have to do this is put the uh, code word, which is Faster Pasta. It's on screen right now. Faster Pasta, spelt wrong. Faster Pasta. Put your name and address on an SMS. Name and address. It has to be yours. It has to be real. And you can't SMS me every week. Because if you haven't won so far, you're not going to. 0439 929 929 is that number. I'm only joking. Of course you can SMS. I'll just ignore it. Um, $50 vouchers. We're giving away two thanks to Faster Pasta. There'll probably be only one left because I'm going to give one to Michelle. We'll see, uh, we'll see Michelle back again next month. But first, we've done a bit of a swap on the couch. Time to talk kids, which is more my type of mentality here. But she's a lot smarter than me. Over to you, Annie Kay. Thanks, Fred. Today on the show, we have Mick, and he's Assistant Superintendent of Waraloo Prison Farm. And we're going to be talking about what the life of a prisoner is like. Hi, Mick. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Um, so what prisons have you worked for? I've worked for Hakey Prison and also Wurraloo Prison Farm. Hakey Prison is a maximum security remand facility. Yep. And remand refers to prisoners who are currently in prison who haven't been sentenced and they're still waiting to go to court. Yep. So any of these that are sentenced to imprisonment are then assessed by Hakey Prison and then they're then sent out to one of the other prisons. Wurraloo Prison Farm, on the other hand, is a minimum security facility its sole focus is on rehabilitation and reintegration for offenders to go back into the community. So what kind of offenders do you have at Worlo? There's a whole range, well there's 16 prisons throughout WA and there's a whole varied diverse group of prisoners throughout all of the prisons. All of the, or the majority of adult prisoners that come into the prison system all go to Hakey Prison and from there they're assessed and sent to the other prisons. Mm -hmm. Worlo Prison Farm in particular is a minimum security facility. So all the prisoners are being carefully vetted and scrutinized to obtain the minimum security rating. Um, there are male prisoners there, and most of them are also coming to near the end of the sentence. Okay, so it's just before they go and um, uh, back into society? Yes. Okay, and so what's the age group of the prisoners that you see? Well, there's a whole varied range of um, offenders throughout the community. And if we look at um, youths or children under the age of 18, many of them are given community-based sentences. But ones that are sentenced to prison or, or sentenced to custody, they go to Banksia Hill Detention Centre. And that is purely just for youths. Um, okay. There's no adults in there at all. So to be an adult prisoner, you have to be a minimum age of 18. OK, so what happens if you start off your sentence as a ch child and you're in Banksia and then you turn 18? Um, if you're on a long-term sentence, um, which is few and far between for the youths, but okay. if they are, then what would happen is when they, when they turn of age and become an adult, they would be transferred to an adult facility. Okay. So they would come into Hakey Prison and then be assessed throughout the adult system. Okay, and could you tell us what the daily life of a prisoner is like? Yep, so prisoners are, they're woken up at seven o'clock in the morning mm. to be counted. <laughs> <laughs> and then from there, they have the breakfast and they clean the cells. Okay. And they have a cell inspection. Then they go off to work. So at Wurraloo Prison Farm, every single prisoner has to go to work. And there's a whole range of different jobs um, that they do there. And the work goes on until around 3.30 on an afternoon. Okay. And then they have recreation time or downtime. And that lasts until about 10 o'clock at night. So what kind of jobs can they do? There is a whole load of different jobs throughout the system. So Wurraloo Prison Farm would have the likes of growing fruit and vegetables on the market gardens. They could be working on the farm, tending the sheep or the crops, or they could be doing maintenance, gardening, cleaning, working in the stores or the canteen or the kitchen. 
And we also have industries such as carpentry, mechanical and the metal shop. And some of the prisoners actually gain formal qualifications through doing traineeships or some TAFE units. And this helps them when they get released from prison. If they have the qualifications or new skills, it, it helps them to get jobs. We also have a very small number of prisoners in Wurraloo Prison who they've been carefully um, um, selected and they're given permission to work outside of the, the prison. Okay. And so they go outside into the community under the supervision of an officer. And they do things like brick paving, general maintenance and cleaning, could be um, painting. Um, also, if we've had a major fire in the local community, they go they'll out. go out and they'll help with the clear up. So, do they get paid for doing these jobs? Yep, they certainly do. Prisoners and are paid. Sorry. That's right. And um, also, you said that they have recreation activities after they after three pm when they finish work. Yep. So, what kind of activities do they get to do? Um, they do sports, so they can do soccer or, or AFL, cricket. Do they get to use computers? Yep, the prisoners can use computers. There's um, absolutely no internet access whatsoever okay. and that's for security reasons and also to help protect the victims of any of the crimes but what they can do is they can use standalone computers or cu computers that are not connected to the internet and they use these for education, education purposes and also for any outstanding legal paperwork that they might have to do okay um, and would you say it's dangerous to work in a prison um, prisons can be dangerous places to work but the staff are highly trained and they're always aware of the surroundings and ready for anything that may come up. Um, we're used to dealing with people with difficult behaviours. We obviously observe our surroundings and we're able to defuse situations fairly quickly. And anybody who comes to the department and wants to be a prison officer, they first go to the training academy and they spend three months learning the basic skills of being a prison officer. Okay. And from there they then go into a prison and they follow the training on for a further six months and throughout that time of the training they learn things like communication skills, cultural awareness, physical restraints and things like how to deal with volatile situations such as riots which are extremely rare yeah. but due to the skills that the officers have we're, ma we're able to keep incidents and assaults down to a minimum. So do you have to be on guard all the time as a prison officer? Well what I would say is if, if you work inside a prison you would need to be aware of your environment and obviously the risks that are associated with that but that's much the same as anybody else in any other profession. Okay and is it what you expected being a prisoner? It's probably more than what I expected. When I, when I first joined I actually thought that prison was a punishment and prisoners went there and I suppose it's much like the TV channels when you watch them <laughs> and prisoners go there and they're punished but actually the punishment is being taken out of society and what we do in prison is we help to work with the prisoners and to give them education courses, give them programs to address offending behaviour and to teach them new skills so that they can get qualifications as well and then when they leave prison they have all these new skills and qualifications and we, we help them with employment as well so we can break that cycle to stop so them from coming back. Yeah, alright. Well thanks so much for coming on the show today. You're welcome. Hope you had a good time. I did, thank you. All right. For more information, go to the Couch website, thecouch.com.au. And thanks so much for watching Kids Biz. Back to you, Fred. Thank you, Annie Kate. Thank you to Mick from Wurraloo Prison. I hope I don't end up in your jail at any time for wearing these lovely shoes. I don't know how women wear these shoes, Michelle. Are you sure they're the right size? I can't walk in it, but uh, hopefully I'll get... Oh, thanks, Michelle. <laughs> Sorry about oh, that. Oh, that crap is gone. <laughs> there you go, talking style. Pushing50.net, that's her website. We'll be back with more of the couch right after this. Well, actually, less of the couch because we've run out of time. See you then. <sighs> Tried those shoes on, but it's really hard to walk in them. Poor Michelle has to try and walk home with flat heels. That's okay. And, and can I just say that website again, pushing50.net. That is the website. Please check it out. We're going to have her back. But do you know what I love about Michelle? It's all about helping people who, who are not confident about improving themselves and their style because of the way society is. They think they have to have millions of dollars to do it. You don't. You can do it on a very small budget. Michelle will help you. Please 
check her out on her website and send her an email if you want to do it privately. But we will have her back next month on the show. And if you want to send us some stuff, you can send it through the, the couch as well. And we'd love to have companies out there like Target, Kmart, Big W, any clothes store that would like to have Michelle maybe offer the outfits to her and she can bring people out to try her style on you. Contact us here at the couch. We'd love to have that happen as well. That is it for this week. I'm very sorry we didn't get time to do our interview with Hey Muser, but we'll have them on next week. And they're just about burning rubber in the car park out of anger, but we'll have them back next week. We're going to leave you today with a wonderful young talent, Sophie Martin. She's been ever so patient. She's waited all day to sing the closing song. Fat Cat's even here to tell her to go to bed. But here she is. Thank you for watching. She's going to sing a beautiful song called Unconditionally by guess who? Katy Perry. We'll see you next week, Australia. Bye bye. Condition!